Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my automated Excel import cleanup video series where I'm teaching you how to import a spreadsheet with junk at the top, junk at the bottom. We're going to clean up all that junk and give you a nice, clean table. And this is part two. So if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch part one, then come on back. All right, so at the end of part one, we imported our data. We've got just to the first row here. Everything above it was deleted. We looked for that word, right? That phrase, contact date. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, I'm going to assume every row here down has a valid date in it. And if not, as soon as I find a row that does not have a valid date in it, we're going to delete everything after that point. Okay, and this, of course, assumes that that's how your data is set up. Yours may vary. You handle it however you want to handle it. I'm just showing you the Lego pieces. All right, so let's go back to our code. And this is, we're in the wrong one. See, I have two buttons up here on my quick launch toolbar. This just opens up the visual basic editor. This one opens up the code for the form that you're in, but you got to be in design view. So sometimes I get lucky. I just hit this, but this opened up to whatever random module I happen to be in, which was the customer list form, which is not where I want to be. So we have to go into design view and now I can hit this button. It'll take me to this guy's code. All right. So here we are. We've deleted the header rows. Now at this point, I do want to close the record set because like I said before, we're going to be sitting in a record set that's open. That's got four deleted records at the top. Okay. So when we close this and then reopen it again, we're going to get a nice fresh record set that has, this is the first record. And now we just got to loop down until we find that. Okay. Instead of working with an already open record set, which the pointer gets messed. When you start deleting records in a record set, things tend to get weird. So I try to avoid it. I'll close and reopen the record set if I can. Yeah, there's ways to refresh it. No, this is just easier. It's just easier. <laughs> there's what's best and what's practical. This is practical. And sometimes I like to put in here the actual comments, right? Importing sheet. This is more for you. I like how the green kind of stands out, right? Deleting header rows. And you can just very quickly and easily see where you're at in the code, right? Uh, loop through valid records with dates. Okay. So now we're going to status uh, looping through records. So now we're going to use another variable similar to done. I'm going to call it found end. I've found the end of the records. All right, same thing. Could you reuse done? Yeah, you could, I guess. But I'm just going to say dim found end as a Boolean. It just makes more sense in my head. I don't know why. We're going to reopen the record set. If you want, you can just copy this, right? Copy that paste it there. We are going to say found n equals false, just like we did with done. Whoops, I hit enter one too many times there. Okay, while not rs.eof. Now with this one, we are going to loop to the end of the entire record set. All right, found end is just going to determine whether or not we delete something in the middle there. Okay, so same thing with the S, we're going to say S equals that. We're going to read the first, re read the current records F1 field. Now, if it's a date, we're just going to continue on our merry way and keep reading until we find one that's not a valid date, right? What can we use to figure out if it's a valid date or not? Well, there happens to be a function called is date, and that will tell you if it's a date or not. Because if you look carefully here, look at the data in here. That's an actual string value. This got imported as a string. I can tell because it's lined up on the left side of the field, right? This, on the other hand, came in as a number. That's the time. Where is it? Access imported that as an actual time value. But this it imported as a date or as a string, excuse me. And I could tell also because my default time value is ISO time, which is year, month, day, which is how everything should be. It's one of my life missions to get everyone to convert to ISO dates. Year, month, day. It makes sense everywhere. There's no confusion. Do it. <laughs> Go watch this video. All right. So anyways, where were we? All right. So we've got a string value. Now we're going to check to see if that is a valid date. And it'll, it'll look at a string value too and say, okay, the value that's in this string is a date. So I'm going to say if this is not a valid date, if not is date S, then 
we found the end, right? We found the last record. Okay, so found end equals true. Now, if I am at the end, if I've found the end, I'm going to delete everything from this point on till I hit the end of the record set. So if found end, then RS delete. Goodbye, right? You are the weakest row. Goodbye. <laughs> and then I still got to RS dot move next. Wend. RS close. Close. And then we can set our RS equal to nothing. Let's bring this guy down. We don't, don't put that up there because we still want RS. We'll, we'll make it nothing down here. There we go. Okay, and then you can status done if you want to. And hey, well, when we're done, let's open up that table, take a look at it, right? Do command dot open table, Excel import T. All right, save it, debug compile once in a while. I'm gonna close that, close it, click it, run it, and uh, look at that, see? Let's make sure that Boromir is the last record. And it is. All right? See so what happened was it looped down all of this. That's a valid date. That's a valid date. That's a valid date. Got down to here, which is not a valid date. So as soon as it hits that, found end is equal to true. For from this point to the rest of the loop. Everything after that point is now deleted. If found end, RS delete. If found end, RS delete. Because nothing else will set it back to false. So it's just going to continue to the end of the record set and mark everybody bye-bye, right? Okay, and so that's the process. Now we're left with a clean set of data. And you might want to clean this up a little bit more. You could do that with a simple query, right? Let's uh, create query design. Let's bring in that temp table. And what can we do here? Let's see. Um, well, we can make a valid contact date time contact date time by merging those fields together, right? C date, which is convert to date, F1. And then we can add to it F2 because this is numeric, right? And remember, if we take a date value and add a number to it, that's a number of days. So 0.5 is noon, half a day, right? Let's see what that looks like. See? There we go. I put our date time together in one nice field. Let's, let's verify. Let's see here, 10, 15. 10.30 a.m., 11, 11.30, yep, looks good. And then we can bring the other fields in to whatever we got here. Let's see, what is it? Uh, the customer name is an F3. The notes is an F4. And the phone number, do they have phone numbers in Middle Earth? <laughs> it's F5. And there we go. And now we've got a nice set of data that we can now go forth and do whatever we want with in our database. We can import it into our existing contact table or whatever, whatever you feel like doing. Save this as my Excel import queue and I'm off to the races. And there you go. So that's how you take a sheet. You can delete whatever extraneous information is off the top of it, read in all the records, delete the crap off the bottom, and then you're left with a nice clean set of data just like this. Okay, that's it. That's pretty good, right? No manual editing required. And say we spent, what, 20, 25 minutes setting this up, and now it's going to save us at least a minute or two every day, not having to open this thing up and make changes before we import it. Some other videos for you to watch. Here's a video that talks about variables in more detail. Here's a video where I talk about that isDate function. This is cool because you could use it to check and see if a, if a year is a leap year. Just make a date, calling it February 29th of that year, and see if it's a valid date. And the isDate will tell you. That's pretty cool. And of course, if you like learning with me, if you like my style, if you enjoy watching my videos and you want to learn more about how to program in VBA for Microsoft Access, come and check out my developer lessons. I got tons and tons of lessons available on my website, starting from the basics. We walk you through step by step all the stuff in the order that you should learn it. So it's a really good course and I, I had a good time recording it and I'm still making new ones. I got developer 46 coming out pretty soon. And if you want to learn more about record sets specifically, I start covering them in Developer 16. I say start covering them because record sets are pretty in-depth and involved. I use them all the time. I constantly am using record sets. And so um, they're really, really cool. <laughs> and I've I got dozens of lessons on record sets, starting with Developer 16. So that's going to do it. That's your tech help video for today. 
Hope you enjoyed this little two-part series. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our Diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers Access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your Access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, $1. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, 
and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.